Today we get to take our countertops home. It all starts with this guy. He seems friendly, right? Wrong. They burrow into ash trees and lay their eggs, leaving their offspring to feed off the tree. The ash beetle is responsible for the destruction of tens of millions of ash trees across the U.S., including the tree in our family's backyard. Which we milled planks from. And once the planks were dry, there was a lot of bowing. So we decided to utilize as much of the wood as we could and turn it into a butcher block countertop. In our last video, we shared that we had all the wood cut down to size and we were finally ready to glue it together. And that's where we pick up this week. We're Mela and Don. We uprooted our lives and left Los Angeles with the dream of converting an MCI D3 40 foot bus into a tiny home on wheels. We are sharing our progress one bite at a time. <laughs> what? How do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? <laughs> It's so sunny. So bright and sunny. <laughs> A couple of days ago, we started gluing the big piece of our countertop together. Because it was so big and you have to do it before the glue dries, we broke it up into two sections, so three rows of planks. First, clamped it together, waited for that to dry. Were you tense there? Yes. That's a big piece. Probably about as tight as it's going to get. Quite a production, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And usually I do this by myself. I know, that's what I was about to say. Why do you do this by itself? You just do it. Almost like brain surgery. Just a few more clamps, though. <laughs> and then came back the next day and put the next two rows of planks in and waited for that to dry. While that dried, we started working on the miter cut. That's pretty close to 90. Okay. We made biscuit holes to join the miter cut. Sanded the glue off the underneath side and added bracing. Deluxe service. Got the screws already in place. with painter's tape on the front side to prevent glue marks. And glued and clamped the bracing together to try to get a tight fit. And I got to do one of my favorite jobs, sanding. Starting with an 80 grit, something aggressive, really smooth it out, and then 100 grit, and then 120 grit, getting finer. We wanted to make sure we didn't lose the character. We're still keeping as much rustic charm to it as we can, but a smooth surface without any bumps that are gonna get food stuck in them. And then it was time to cut out the door for our TV lift. We built the base for the TV lift cabinet a long time ago. It's really exciting to start to see it come together. And 
it didn't go so smooth. There's a slight mistake over here. What happened? And over here, went the exact distance. While it wasn't ideal, Richard showed us how to cover up the mistakes. Okay. Now you can come back and finish it. Work a little at a time. Okay. Yeah. I think we just, I'll just do it with the hands off. Yeah, you sure did. Well, you know what? I think I can fix it. I think I did it. That's all right. Oh, God. I did the cutting. Richard filled it in with a sliver of wood. Okay, give me some glue. And we're actually really happy with how it turned out. And we can just trim that out. You'll have a little patch back in business. I don't mind a little bit of space right there. Like I said, we want to put a little bit around here. Here, and here. We can do that. So that when it just comes down, it sits. sit on it. Yep. Right. We finally got a plan for our TV lift where it's going to come up out of the countertops and ordered some SOS hinges. Now, these will be pretty cool. We'll share them with you once we get them in, but it should be kind of a hidden hinge inside of our countertop. And that's it for the day. We'll be back tomorrow and try to make some more progress. I just want to jump into this video real quick to let you know that thank you to the Rehabba Tribe, we got a new lens for our camera. How does it look? <laughs> we want to keep improving our gear and in that way improving our videos. With the help of the tribe, we can do that. If you don't know what the Rehabba Tribe is, it's our membership group. In the tribe, you'll be the first to know of news and what's happening with us and the first to see our videos you'll get bonus content. Hello Rehabba Tribe, we are taking you behind the scenes today. We showed you some photos of our shower, a little sneak peek. We're not showing anybody else what's going on here with the Navia shower head for a little while. And it's a chance for us to connect with you on a more personal level. We're just going to ask you now for your questions. You can go and put them in the comments below. You can join the Rehab a Tribe either with a monthly membership or now we've got annual memberships which are discounted. So we'll include a link below so you can head over and become part of the community. So we got the shop to ourselves today and the first thing we're going to do is get our wood flipped over for the big piece of the countertop Mark out where our bracing is gonna go so that we can get it nice and sanded down where the glue had dripped through so that we could double up the wood for the front, the back, the sides, and then put bracing where it's gonna make contact where the kitchen cabinets come together. You ready to do more sanding? Yep, my specialty. the corner piece, the L part of our kitchen countertop, sand it down so it's all ready to look pretty when I stain it. And now I'm just going to prep the underneath side. I've got to get rid of some of the glue and some of those blocks we used for clamping when we glued them so that Don can come and put the bracing on this underneath side.
Unfortunately, the multi-tool won't turn on. It's not turning on. What am I going to say? So, we got to cut a little bit of these center braces by hand. <laughs> it's a workout. very detailed measurements of our cabinets in order to know exactly where to put this bracing on. So basically we've placed the bracing where it, the countertop will sit on top of our cabinet. So we can secure the bracing down to the cabinet and we've added a few more pieces of bracing in just for extra support because it's a moving vehicle. Get from this side, you'd see the. Uh... I know it's pretty right now. Wow. Okay. <gasps> Blow the sawdust. <laughs> <laughs> so, trying to get something that'll kind of go together here. more to go. We'd cut our planks down to about an inch, but we want them to look like two inches. So the bracing will actually show around where our sink cutout is. You'll actually see two rows of planks, but it's going to look a little different along the front. So we didn't want to completely give up on the idea of having a live edge countertop, so we kept our live edges, and this is actually going to get attached to the front edge of our countertop, so it'll look like it's two inches thick. It's a rainy day, we're back in the shop. And then this piece is gonna go here. Because this is gonna flip this way. To do my alignment for the hinges. Gotcha. We're gonna call these the face. Okay. Okay. This piece mm -hmm. to the face, always. We end up using SOSS brand invisible hinges and we were able to buy the SOSS template for these hinges and route out the area where the hinge gets installed. Time. It's kind of detailed work, but I'm pretty happy we did it. Oh yeah, we got plenty of wiggle room too. Now these are specialty hinges. They actually will hide inside the wood so you won't see any hinges on top. And then when it closes, they're pretty much invisible. We did keep our live edge and we're choosing which piece is going to go on the front of our countertops. We've got the pieces picked out for the live edge, but now we just have to figure out how to make it work.
jointer to get our sides squared off that need to be squared off that are gonna attach to the rest of the countertop. And now we're just running our live edge pieces through the sander so that we can get it the exact same thickness as our countertop so it continues from one smooth surface into our live edge. We're using the uh, miter saw, cutting them down so that they'll butt up right against each other. And after we sand them, maybe you won't see the seam, maybe you will. We're just kind of figuring it out as we go along. All right, what do you think? I think it looks really nice. All right, the big one is complete for the live edge. Now for the corner pieces, got to make a couple cuts. And hopefully I don't ruin it. There we go. looks too small. <laughs> Silly. Moment of truth. Are you ready? Yep. <gasps> looks pretty good. Yep. Well done. take everything into the bus and dry fit it because well we've learned that things aren't always square and perfect in the bus. We decided biscuits is the best option so we've got our biscuit holes all ready. We're gonna dry fit it make sure it fits and then we'll probably have to borrow some of Richard's clamps and take it over to the bus so that once we know it's gonna work, we have enough clamps to glue it all in. Let's get these guys connected. there. I'm pretty excited. Now we just need it to stop raining so that we can transport our countertop and all its pieces into the bus and then it's really gonna come alive. It's another gray cloudy winter day but we get to bring our countertops home today so big grins over here. 79 years since I last wore I don't think it can go on much more I can feel it We can feel it We've got peacetime kleptocrats keeping score Keep our heads down, let them get some more We don't need it Let them keep feeling Richard has been kind enough to let us use his truck to transport our countertops back home because, well, it's not raining, but, you know, it could at any moment. <laughs> He's got a covered truck and that makes us feel a little bit better. This is always I'm worried about in the driveway, these potholes and mud. Oh. Oh. <laughs> and Don's dad 
is right behind us. I'm so happy he's arriving home right now because I'm a little worried about me trying to carry that big piece of countertop into the bus. I'm relieved to have this big piece in the bus. I think there was a part of us that was like, I just hope we get it through the door. <laughs> <laughs> this process of making these countertops has been pretty intense, but really fun. I think it's been such a huge bonus for us to be able to work in Richard's workshop under his guidance. Yeah, it's been so nice to walk in every day and him just say, well, I've thought about this and here's what we should do, and then just tell us what to do. <laughs> Learning to use the new tools and seeing how much easier it is when you have the right tools has made a big difference too. There's so many steps to this process and we're gonna wrap this video up here and we'll save the exciting part of really making this puppy come alive <laughs> for the next video. I just can't stop staring at it because it's so pretty, it's so beautiful. But we'll share that with you next time.